OK, let me just check upon oh, everything to see if it's good to go. I'm going to close that because that light is killing my eye. We're going to turn this guy down. So it's shut up. And then going to check one more time on the feed. <laughs> uh, let me see here. Okay, looks like we are good to go. So yes, how's it going everybody? Welcome back to a Q&A edition of the Robbie Muscle Podcast, answering questions from the team, well not the team Rubby Muscle, the Rubby Muscle Athletes Facebook page, which you can find, do, 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 at facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash rugby muscle, and we can, if you're watching on the YouTubes, please make sure you subscribe, because this will be going live there as well. Um, or well, not live, but we're going to up there next week. But this will be, I think it will be the last one. I'm not, I'm not yet 100% confirmed on this, but I'm almost certain that this is going to be the last Q and A I do on this Facebook group as part of a weekly Q and A. Um, lots of things are going on with Team Rugby Muscle um, and the Rugby Muscle Academy, which will take up the space of these Q and A. So they'll be behind, kind of behind a paywall. Um, because I just think that that's where my time is most diver uh, going to be needed because these guys will be paying for this service and that, that's my best way to reach um, a bunch of guys that are in the team and in the Rubber Muscle Academy a bit better. Um, and as you might have seen already, we have got lots of um, podcast content coming at you already. Um, the Rubber Muscle Applied Series is going to keep going with lots of different ones. We've got more going on about how to train for rugby coming up. We'll be having more about conditioning for rugby. We'll be having diet, uh, diet and nutrition for rugby. And we'll be doing rugby skills as well. And with that, all that in mind, it's just there's no need to have these Q&As. Well, there is a need, but I just don't have the time to get to these Q&As as well as the Q&As that will be part of Team Rugby Muscle and everything that goes along with that. So look out for Team Rugby Muscle to come in the future. Um, that will be, I, I plan on, well, the current crop of Team Rugby Muscle guys that are already in will be um, upgraded to a new membership as of March the 5th, and then they'll be open to new guys on March the 8th, I believe. That's that's how I want to get it done, um, and it will be a really systematic um, sort of Everything I want to do in terms of rugby, well, that will be housed in the Rugby Muscle Academy. Everything I want to do to help you guys out in terms of your rugby strength and condition, your rugby overall rugby performance. So we won't just have workouts in there. Um, we won't. We will have nutrition guides as well, tracking data, way that you ways that you can keep track of many different things, not just your body weight and your food, but also your training, your performance, your sleep, things like that. We'll also have skill elements that you can add on, um, speed elements that you can add on, extra things that you can think about, ways that you can monitor your sleep, keep control, control of that, different things that you can do for not just, you know, I say skills, but that's such a huge area as well, right? So it's not just, um, you know, passing. It's different types of passing, all the different types of passing, all the different types of offloading, all the different types of tackling, rucking, all of this. And it's all going to sort of slowly come together to form the, the Rugby Muscle Academy. It's been a long time coming. Um, you know, I've been wanting to do something like this ever since I was um, strength and conditioning coach for the Rugby Dump Academy um, back in the day. Um, you know, I saw the potential of what that could do and the, the amount of guys that were interested in it. And this is easily the next best thing. So I really hope you guys will, will uh, put your faith in me and sign up because this will be game-changing for... Amateurs that want to, or you know, amateurs, semi-professionals, whoever who want to take whatever, you know, take everything they can within a reasonable schedule and just systematically improve. And I just think that's not done in rugby. You know, you just show up to training, you do whatever training is asked of you by your coach, and then you play on a Saturday, and then that's it. And then you never, like, you know, you you never get, you never go through 
or you're never obliged to go through specific progressions on skill training or fitness or whatever. You're just you're just doing shit over and over and over again. It's it's this it's a there's a big lack of growth, and I want to really encourage it, especially the guys that you know. We've been through a fucking hell of a year in 2020. We're still going through a hectic period. I think once we've made it to the other side and we're still playing rugby at the end of this, that's, you know, I think you guys are stuck with it. We might as well make it the best that we can or we might as well make you guys the best players that you can be. With that in mind, that's, you know, you will see these Q&A, so it will still keep going on if you're a part of Team Rugby Muscle. Um, but if you're not, then I advise you to join them. Or you'll see these. I think we'll, we, we might still do one on the free Facebook group once a month. Um, but they won't go on the YouTubes anymore. So thumbs up on the YouTubes or comments on the YouTubes. This will be the last video that you probably will see going up on here. Um, this, this is a huge schedule already going up. So with that in mind, let's get to the questions, shall we? Shout outs to everyone that's joining on the live stream. Thank you for your thumbs up. Um, it does help. I forgot to encourage everyone to put the th to give the thumbs up and ask any questions in the comments below. If you ask a question, it will get answered on this live. Um, I can't save these for next week, I guess. I guess I've got to run through all of them. So um, if you ask it today, it will get answered. If you ask it still and you're watching this after the fact, it still will get answered just in a different manner. Maybe in the monthly Q&As, maybe if you're a part of the team, be asked, answered there. But... Let's get into it, because I keep saying that. I haven't got into it yet. So, first question is, Joseph Edwards says, at this time of year, and with no exact date for when rugby will be back, is it better to just follow a power building program to put on size, and then light cardio, or is it better to do a more rugby-specific program? Um, so, I think this is something that I've sort of answered in... in previous lives but it's something that i do think needs to keep it's something that i mentioned with everyone that I, I coach everyone that starts to come on board with rugby muscle elite it's anyone i really talk to about training for rugby with no prospective season around is you sort of have to engineer yourself a season so i would focus still on the 2021 preseason. it seems quite a way away but I, i've done you know i've, I've recently with Team Rugby Muscle being launched, I've done the periodization that will result in us being ready for the 2021 season. And it, you know, it's not it's not that long. There's not so there's not like so much work that you can do. There's there's you're still going to hit the season or hit preseason and still be like shit. I've still got this and this and this to work on. So you know, I would hold off and say, yeah, I've got all this time. I'm not losing any focus. I'd say, fo let's focus on August ish 2021. And from there, you want to go back and you want to do a needs analysis. You want to see where you're lacking. You want to see where you need to improve. Um, sort of go from there. I, I can't, that's not answering the question as it's laid out, but it's answering the question the way I see fit. Um, you know, I think what you need to do primar first, primarily is get yourself fit, uh, as fit as you need to be to play, and stay fit. If you're not fit enough to play rugby right now, um, get get fit enough to play rugby right now you should always be operating at that you know um you can then develop real high level fitness at the beginning of the season just to get ready and make sure you're even more comfortable but for the most part you know rugby is so aerobic you know every time um you do big actions in rugby you breathe heavy you, you know and you breathe heavy until you've got enough oxygen back in your system to go again so the better you get aerobically, the better you get at pumping that oxygenated uh, muscle uh, blood around the muscles, the better the fitter you're going to be, the better you're going to play rugby. Also, the more work you can get done when you're in the gym, right? If, if a heavy set of five like just taxes you out so much that you can't um, do another set for five minutes, get fitter, like drop the weight and, and keep those, you know, keep a short rest period or just get overall fitter by working dedicated conditioning stuff. Both ways can work. Um, probably want to do, if that's your case, do you want to do some dedicated conditioning stuff. Um, I would look at doing, if you're look, thinking about your condition, I would then look at, you know, doing some um, tempo work uh, or extensive power work. If you do that stuff, 
it's almost rugby specific whilst you're just getting in your fitness. Um, and that also gives you a real nice base so that when rugby season or rugby training or um, you know impacts or sprints and lots of things come around, you're even more prepared for that stuff when it is there. So I think that is, you know, it's it's that uh, that answer that I'm giving here is sort of a, a mix of both, right? It is rugby specific, but it's also a power building program to put on size with like cardio in the form of conditioning sessions such as tempo work or whatever. You know, I think that is rugby specific. I don't think rugby specific needs to be um, like your special strength program, like doing movements such as uh, scrum engage isometric holds or um, line out push presses or something like that. I don't think they have a place right now. Maybe getting stronger in the push press might help, though, not like line out specific or getting stronger in a squat might help your rugby, you know, your um, your scrummaging but it's not a direct rugby specific move it's just giving you that potential because you've got time to then realize that potential when you actually get back to playing but then at the same you know and if you're saying that you're someone who wants to put on size you know if you already are big enough and strong enough for your position and it's cardio that holds you back then like focus on that stuff that's that's then your rugby specific focus or you can even be more rugby specific and say, you know, actually fitness wise, I'm pretty good. I can still get stronger and do all that stuff, but I should really be focusing on my skills. Maybe I'm, I'm really bad at passing off my left hand. And this is something that sort of hits home to me and is a big reason why I'm doing, like, I want to lay out the rugby muscle Academy, like the way, the way I want to do it is because I was never, I was never the best at passing off my left hand. Um, I would always, you know, I practice it a little bit, but when it comes to a game, I would always do the old rugby league end over end, and actually developed a good rugby league style pass, and I could, I could, I could launch it. But I never really was told at any point how I would slow the movement down and progress, and what I could do like on a daily basis to improve that left-handed passing. You know, your your rugby coaches aren't there for that. They're there just to make your team the best team, and most guys do that by just encouraging all their players and the ones that rise to the top they're going to just pick them and then they're going to try and make play to their best tactics so that they win it's not so much about like let's get every single player improving their skills how can each like, they just don't have the time because they're only with you on a tuesday and a thursday or however long even if you're semi-professional it's like that stuff has to be down to you and so if you're someone that doesn't you know is not very proficient at passing or even rucking or whatever Break down that skill and work on that skill for 10, 20 minutes every day or three or four times a week and watch those weeks add up and watch your skills get so much better and then you're able to um, actualize and realize your strength and condition uh, advantage even better. And that way, you know, it's not really answering what you would do in terms of this or this. It's here are your options. Pick and choose as necessary for you. Uh, okay. Okay. Next question. Uh, Hamilton says, oh God, he says two for you. With summer coming sooner than later, what it, well, first off, shout outs for thinking about the summer in February. Uh, most people wait till April and they're like, oh crap, I've got a holiday in four weeks. How do I, how do I get shredded? Um, with summer coming sooner than later, what is your one go-to exercise you suggest for a mix of rugby and looking good on the beach? Well, just as, I give you a shout out for thinking <laughs> ahead of time. I'm going to give you a, 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 an E in questions here. This is not a good question. Uh, <laughs> what is the my one go to exercise? I don't like these questions because there is never a like a uh, how do I put it? It's a false dichotomy, and, and the more we entertain, entertain these false dichotomies, where you only have to choose one exercise, or you only have to do this or this or this, like. You know, it's it's fun for a little thought experiment, but it's largely a waste of time. But it's something that I see get asked a lot, and that's how we end up doing fucking so much stupid. Like we do push-ups on the bike, or we do um, so many stupid shit, so much stupid shit because we have to put everything into like a, a pointless answer. So the answer is uh, there isn't one. If you have to be oh, okay, actually, I'm, I'm wrong on this. I've just thought there is one exercise that would really help you in terms of playing rugby better 
by losing weight, but also, um, you know, get you a little bit leaner for the beach. And that would be um, an AMRAP set. You'd have to do it as an AMRAP set, I think, because as many reps as possible, obviously, if you don't know what AMRAP stands for, I'll do as many reps as possible of plate pushes. Okay. And what you would do is you'd get a plate full of food, shitty food, and you would push it away. And you do that as many times as possible over the course of a, of a week. And by which time you've then consumed less calories, oh my God, you, you're overly, you're starting to lose weight and get into uh, shape. You're losing extra, that excess fat storage because you're using those for energy. Oh my God, you've lost, you've, you've solved it, you know, and you've not done any extra, any extra pointless exercise. Weight loss, getting in shape is all about diet. It's as simple as that, really. Like, um, you can, you can obviously, you, you know, you should always be training, but the training should have another purpose. It shouldn't be fat loss. And if you watch the fat loss videos, you will know that, you will understand that. Um, in terms of like looking good, just look like an athlete. So train like an athlete and don't be fat. It's real simple. Um, if I had to push myself for an exercise, It'd be any like it'd be probably it could be like possibly walking or, or low level jogging or low level like or maybe cycling but probably just jogging um, because it has a little bit more relevance to rugby. But if you think about it, like the problem is with a lot of people's um, cardio efforts, both for rugby and for fat loss, is that they're so short that they don't end up um, mimicking rugby or any you know, building out the aerobic system in any meaningful manner. And they also don't, um, like, they're not sustained for a long enough period to really burn calories. Like, if you do, like, go on a um, any sort of, um, a- any cardio machine where it says, you know, guesstimated calories. Go as hard as you fucking can for a minute. You ain't going to get anywhere. You're not going to get, like, you're not even going to uh, burn off the equivalent of, like, one apple. So it, it's completely pointless. Um You've got to do it for a longer period of time. And to do that, you should do a lower level effort. Oh my God, that also coincides to doing a lower level effort to build out the aerobic system, which will help you as a rugby player. So I guess in like uh, me saying how bad this question is, I've then actually gone and bloody answered it perfectly. So there you go. Low level cardio work. Because you can do so much, you can always recover. doesn't make you any hungrier. Builds out the aerobic system. um, Doesn't fatigue you too much. Um doesn't interfere with your recovery for your other strength work low level cardio for the win second question if you could do one speed set what's with the you could only do if you could do one speed session only once a week because i haven't got time for anything more what would you do varied sprints and as always thank you um if you could only do one speed session a week i would probably firstly most people can only do one speed session a week so doing one speed session and, and they don't so doing one speed session a week is a good thing. I would essentially do a template like just get the body warm. So do you know a good five minute. So important for sprint training that you do a really good warm up. So skipping, um, bounding, low level jogging, anything to get the body warm. Get a good like dynamic warm up, dynamic stretches going on. Then go into a few. Uh, I'm not going to get into that debate about whether you need to warm up for sprint if anyone has seen i'm not even going to bring it up i've already brought it up um get the body warm go through a few technique drills just to get the the motor patterns in place maybe you do a few um hamilton you're in the um team rugby muscle so do a few of those wall drills maybe if you're not if you're out in the park do it against a tree or a fence um and then a few little light moving technique drills then i would just sprint i would build up from i do 70 80 90 and then go for like five or so full out sprints if you're looking at rugby i would do mostly just sprinting just 20 meters if that maybe even 15 do that walk back take a full minute to recover go again um i wouldn't do any worry about over speed stuff um i would worry about you know, sprinting as fast as you can over a short period of time. Rugby is mostly acceleration. Um, then once you've done that stuff, I would then potentially look at doing some extra power work on top of that. You know, you need to be as fresh as you can, but as warm as you can to sprint because it requires technique. 
speed, like in terms of like getting your feet onto the ground as far as you can, but also as much power because you want to apply as much force to the ground as you can. Once you've done that, then you can work on some more slower power power stuff like bounding, etc. That would be would come along after. Spend no more than thirty minutes, and I'd be done. Um, that's why I like to do sprinting sometimes if people have good access before um, lifting because you've got time. You know, sprinting sh a sprint session shouldn't really take any more than like forty minutes on the absolute high end because not only because you know when we're looking for speed, we're looking for speed and that will slow down if you spend too long doing it. But also, um, well, that's the actually only reason. Um, it's the only, you know, it's the only reason it matters. If you're working speed, make sure you're working speed. The other thing I would say is if you've only got one session a week, I would do alternating weeks. So one week I would do just straight line speed. And the next week I would do, um, like five, five, five. So it's sprint, step, sprint. Sprint forward five, sprint to the right side five, or, or 45 degree. I practice different cuts in my second session. Um, that one you can do um, a little, uh, rather than do the bounds and stuff, I would just slowly build up to like make sure you're working, good, you're getting good steps before you go. But that's what I would do. Um, and again, you'd still have time to, for a lift after. Uh, next question comes from Ian. What are your biggest takeaways from the chat with Dr. James Hoffman? Mm. Good question. I like this. Um, uh, first off, shout out to Dr. James Hoffman. He's he's come on. He he speaking of the Rugby Dump Academy, like I did earlier. He was actually he was actually the, my first guest on that. Um, really good, knowledgeable guy. Um, like keeps the basics to basics in. In you know, in the face of being part of Renaissance Periodization, that are a huge company that um, you know now beginning this giant market marketing. Uh, what do I say? Like a not a roller coaster, but uh, this giant marketing wheel that is now just rolling and rolling and rolling, and it's got all this hype. You know, when it comes to fitness marketing, when you get huge, it's very um, like. You want to avoid being the boring people, but he, time and time again, just sticks with the basics, especially when it comes to strength and conditioning, stays away from the hype, unless there's something that actually has any sort of credibility, that's incredibly rare. Um, that is not answering the question. The question was, what was my um, biggest takeaway? I'd say, from that conversation, um, I actually say that I'm fucking right about this testing thing. <laughs> I'm going to make it about me again. But like everything he said, like elsewise, were responses that I kind of expected. There was nothing that I, you know, had any thought, like, like any massive insights on, um, or not off the top of my head anyway. Um, but the when we spoke about testing, like I really pushed him on it because I, because I, the more I think about this, and the more you know, I'm not a coach who coaches a specific team. Or has anyone above me that might fire me if I don't um, produce extra tests to justify my job, right? I, I actually just monitor all of my clients, all of my athletes, one by one, and I see that they're progressively getting better, and that's good enough for me. It should be good enough for anyone. If you can progressively see that you're getting better, and if you, if you know, if your athletes feel like they're getting better when they play rugby and they play better rugby, and they can attribute to the things that you're working. Like, why do you need to run a fucking test to, to prove that? Now, it's not exactly what I said to him. <laughs> I just said, you know, because he, he said, you know, you don't, he said you don't have to, you know, you should should do testing maybe if a couple times a year or a few times a year just to, to see you're progressing, which I then pushed back. And I said, well, but if you know you're progressing, do you even need to do any testing at all? And he said, well, yeah, but it's still good practice to do some testing. But like, he then basically came to me and said actually no you're like if you're if you've got a really good monitoring system in place then there is no need for testing and i think he worded it better than me and that's probably what you what i took away not that i'm right but monitoring is so much better than testing and it's that's that's the way i would phrase it is that there's no need for testing if you've got a good monitoring system in place you don't have to um i'm trying to think of a good analogy right if you know that you're, if you've got a, you know, for example, 
if you've got one of those um, flashy Traeger grills, is it, that has the app on it that tells you how hot your, your the inside temperature of your grill is, you don't need to test it. Yeah, this is a good analogy. So you've got so the the Traeger grill versus a normal barbecue, right? And you know your normal or smoker. I don't know how these fucking things work. I'm I'm a pescatarian, but the the on a Traeger grill, you've got the app and it tells you at all times. It's monitoring the heat inside the grill, so it's telling you, oh, this is this heat, this is this heat. It's going to cook really well. You don't have to worry about it. You don't have to open it. In fact, every time you open that grill, you have to you know you let out some of the heat. It, 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 it reduces the quality and it, uh, of your cooking or means that you have to cook longer because you've let out all of that heat versus, you know, because it, it takes the, the smoke, you know, it takes the meat out of that environment where it's being smoked and t- lets the temperature drop, etc. Versus a, a, a regular barbecue or a regular smoker where you don't have that app. So um, you know every now and again, like you know what should be expected, but it's a good idea to pop the hood or to pop the, the lid off that smoker Every now and again, just to check that that meat's doing what it's doing, or that the smoke is the right temperature. There's no f- giant fire going on. That you're you're cooking the way you want to cook. Now, the Traeger grill is where you've got good monitoring system within your training. You don't need to have uh, you, you you just don't need to open up and do any test. You know, and if you do, then for no reason you're sacrificing extra time, effort, and you're reducing the quality of the process that you're going through. Versus you, you know, if you're sort of not, you haven't got a good monitoring system in place with the regular barbecue or smoker, you have to, you know, it's not ideal. But if you really want to make sure that you are progressing and you're, you're doing what you want to do, you, yeah, you have to test every now and again. But the more often you test, the the longer you drag that out, right? And the more you risk just messing it all up. Um, but you still probably have to test because you might, you know, say, you put it in for two minutes, for two hours. I don't know how long these rules work, but say you put the um, so you put the meat in for two hours, and that's that's what it said. But then you you finish it after two hours, and you realize you burnt. It's burnt because it, the temperature's way too high, and there was lots of flames going on that you didn't see from the outside. Well, had you done some testing, you would have known that, and you would have avoided that uh, situation. Okay, there's some uh, Velcro on this like wall here for no reason. I have no idea what it's doing here. It's just distracted me at this point. That's what this arm was doing. Um, anyway, with that awkwardness out of the way, let's get on to the next question. Also from Ian, who says, uh, who do you think the next Irish 10 should be? 100% at the minute, it should be Joey Carberry. I, I don't, well, I know he's been injured for the longest time, but he, I, I've rated him for a long time. It should have been Joey Carberry for a while. I think they've hung on to Sexton too long. Um, you know, and I think that they've done that only because Joey Carberry has been, had a bit of a nightmare of his injuries. I think he was out all of 2020. Um, I think Sexton's been past it for a while. But then again, if you've got his experience um, around everyone else, I think he can help. But I think they're at that period where Sexton was such a great that it's, it, you know, you, you rather than start another fly half for a few games here and another fly off for a few games here, whoever's in form and pick the in form guy just for the sake of it. They want to find the right guy and keep him in. So they were testing out Billy Burns to see if he was the guy. It's probably not the guy. I don't think Rob Bur- Ross Burn or any of the Burns are the guy. I think it's it's got to be uh it's it's gotta be Carberry. But hear me now, believe me later, which is a phrase from another podcast. Hear me now, believe me later. Um What's the lad name? What's the lad's name from Munster? Healy, is it? Um, let me let me check this out real quick. Uh, he he is class, the redhead um, from uh, Munster, the young guy, Ben Healy, mate. I'm impressed when I watch him. Uh, don't know if he plays too. I think he seems like he's quite loose. Which might not be best for the uh, the the way the Irish sort of play, but then I think why not have like they they're so organised around that that you could have a fly half with quite a little bit of flair like Ben Healy, um, but I'm, I'm a big fan of him. Um, speaking of Six Nations in Ireland, I've actually uh, I've gone ahead and in my Super Brew predictions, I've predicted that Italy are going to beat Ireland. 
sorry for all the Irish people, but that's what I've done. Um, no, I'm not mean, sorry. Like that means that I want like they're they're gonna win. It means nothing, but I do. I think. Well, it's actually more more than anything. It's because I'm behind with my team, um, so I need to do something to make up ground. And I've I've been hyping up this Italy team. Um, I'm not just following on. Um, if anyone watches Squid Rugby, I'm not just. Fo- I, I, I've been seeing a couple of his videos where he said similar things. But I, I think that they're playing quite well, and I think it's being ignored. And I think Ireland are just not playing very well. They're playing good control, but I think Italy can win this game. I really do. Um, now, do I ever necessarily think they are going to win? No, but fuck it. If you're going to if you're going to be hyping up Italy as much as I have done, you got to stand by your words when it comes to Super Bowl predictions. Okay, we have got a couple more questions before we round out this podcast. Liam Jordan says. Recently, you found the podcast on Spotify, starting back from 2014. Effective, want some effective training to build strength, enhance game performance, hungry to progress from where I am just now, and train smarter. Yes, mate. Mate. Yes, mate. Um, Liam, that's a, you know, I think you should start with the rugby physical preparation pyramid. Um, it just sort of simplifies the whole idea of what you should be training as a player. Like, Get the base stuff in place in first, and once you've done that, you know either keep going to that well or max out that well for, for as much as you can for a bit. Take advantage of the stuff. Take advantage of that with the stuff above. Um, uh, I mean, there's not really a question there, so I think yeah. From there, I'd also say that it's good that you know where you're at because that's a huge part of it as well. People just say, "Oh, I want, I want rugby conditioning workouts." Like, what does that mean, like? Are you really unfit? No, I'm actually a marathon runner. Well, I mean, your your session's going to be different to um, the guy that's just come over from strongman that decides that he wants to carry a ball around. So many different permutations can be rugby strength and conditioning. That, the rugby physical preparation pyramid gives you a really good base to start from. Or just don't worry about thinking about it and go to, um, uh, well, actually, just sign up for the emails at rugby-muscle.com download the 50 free conditioning sessions and then from there i will shoot you an email at some point when the uh, rugby muscle academy aka team rugby muscle opens up again and just join and then you and you've got for 40 dollars a month you've got um all of your strength and condition like sorted out for you and if you want to put in any extras there will be optional extras to go in there as well that you can sort of customize you can keep everything tracked and you can really keep yourself on top of it whilst only paying forty dollars a month. I think it's a bargain. Sean O'Connor says, "I read the article about HICT, high intensity, high intensity continuous training, and I'm interested in trying it out. How would you set up a high intensity uh, continuous training workout? How would you incorporate it into your regular strength and conditioning training?" So I'd set up a workout like I sort of laid out in that article. I think that article actually lays out exactly how to set up a HICT workout. I would pick my method, um, probably lower body dominant, and I would just go for, I'd start out with 20 minutes um, and then maybe look to increase, or you could do start with 20 minutes and then you know add a set and just do two sets of 20 minutes and just go from there um, once you're fit enough. So maybe do... 20 minutes, then two sets of 15, um, then two sets of 20. Easy. That's That'd be a three-week progression, or, or a, you do that twice, twice, or two time, two weeks on the trot, so you do 20, 20, then you do your two 15s twice for, for another two weeks, and you've got six weeks of uh, HICT training perfectly, doing it once a week. Um, how would you incorporate it into it? You can incorporate it any day, really. It's sort of a, it's, it's not, like if you're doing really, if you've got sprint Monday and sprint Wednesday or heavy lift Wednesday and sprint Monday, I wouldn't probably do it on that Tuesday, but I wouldn't. I don't think you necessarily need to put it on a high day. Um, I would put H. I I'd probably put it mostly still on my low days, as long as the day following isn't sprints or isn't anything overly massively like heavy on the lower body that. It might impact it, but for the most part, it's not like you don't you don't finish a HICT session and um, have your legs completely on fire. 
because you get that recovery and you get that fresh blood through to the legs every single time. You actually feel quite fresh, but you're just you're just sweaty as fuck. So uh, that's how I'd incorporate it. Um, and, and also, other thing with this would be I would use it for four to six weeks, maybe go through two blocks, um, and then I would I would leave it for a, for a, a good. I would only introduce it for four to like ten to twelve weeks in total, two times in a year. I wouldn't do it more than that. Um, I would then focus on the other areas around it. It's not like, as with anything, it seems like it's really like you get quite good progression from it. You can't just progress on it indefinitely. You would have to um, cycle it on, reach your potential, see that plateau coming, just get out of there and do something different that's going to give you more gains. And then you, you hope to keep those gains as you keep going. Okay. Last question on this live is from Will Daniel, who, who just came into the group. He said, getting leaner whilst increasing weight week by week. I'm stuck at 163 pounds for the last couple of months. I'm in a constant fasted state. Uh, oh, no. I'm a constant faster, and I'm usually on OMAD, one meal a day diet. But I'm looking into increase that heading into the summer. Well, if you're stuck at uh, 163 pounds, and you're only eating one meal a day, like, and the way to put on mass is through consuming stuff that then builds out your mass. If you're only eating one meal a day, you, you know, you're, you're leaving yourself so much um, in terms of room to consume extra calories that would put on the weight. Um, I would also say that if you're looking at getting leaner whilst increasing weight, I just don't, like, the way you would do that sort of similar to the question I answered last week about lean gains. Um, you, you get leaner because more of your lean body mass is muscle, right? So say if you're, uh, what did you say, 163 pounds at 10% uh, body fat. And these are just completely arbitrary figures, but bear with me. 163 pounds at 10% body fat. If you put on four pounds, you know, five, or, yeah, if you're stuck at 163, you put on four pounds, you get to 167. Um, or actually, let's say you put on seven pounds, you get to 170, right? But only one of those pounds, now that wouldn't work, that math wouldn't, would that math check out? I'm not sure. Yeah, it would. Only one of those pounds is um, fat and you get and you get six pounds of muscle. Well, technically you're getting leaner because, I don't know if the math is right on this, but the more the more muscle you would put on, the leaner you would get because relatively you've got less body fat, right? So I'll go back to the four pound example because it's easier because you can put on four pounds of lean muscle a lot easier, especially if you're only 163 pounds. So you put on four pounds of lean muscle, right? You've got leaner because although you've kept, you've kept the same amount of body fat in terms of raw numbers, um, your body fat percentage goes down because now what was 10% of 163 is now 9% the same number is now 9% of 167, right? So you, you, your, your, your body fat goes down. Now, I would question the logic in terms of why do you want to get leaner? Like, those are two th opposing goals, right? You've got gaining mass and you've got losing mass, okay? Yes, ideally fat mass. Yes, ideally muscle mass. But you've got gaining mass and losing mass. And they're both opposite ends of the spectrum. So I would go full hog. I would try and... I would if I was you, try and get to 170, not as quick as possible, but slowly but surely. Make sure that most of it is lean, as much of it as you can is lean, but the body weight is moving. You don't get stuck at a body weight. You keep going, you keep going, you keep going. Once you get to 170, and maybe one or two of those pounds are fat, then you clean up those one or two extra pounds, you get leaner again. You, so you, you, know, you then only go to 165, and then you work up to 173, and you would constantly slide up that scale as you got heavier and heavier and heavier. Now, um, when you said I, I'm a constant faster, for some reason that put into my head that you need to do sprint training. I don't know why that came into my head, but I guess it's a point that I've got in my head now, so I sort of have to let it out. Uh, if you if you gain weight and you're someone that is a um, you know an outside back in rugby or someone that relies on their speed, you do want to make sure that you are doing sprint work 
um, whilst you're, um, let me just turn this off. You want to be doing sprint work whilst you're gaining that size, just so that you don't sacrifice speed. Um, if anything, you get faster, you learn to apply the extra mass that you're putting on your body to propel you further and faster. And with that, I think I've answered all the questions on this live. We have finished a perfect, steady 40 minutes. Um, let me just check. We are good and we are done. Like I said before, sign up at rugby-muscle.com to the uh, emails. The site where Team Rugby Muscle will be launching from isn't quite live yet, but I think it's up. So I don't want anyone to be misled. Um, if you go to academy dot rugby dash muscle.com it might be there if it looks like it's broken shoot me an email tj at rugby dash muscle.com slide into my dms at tj underscore rugby thank you guys so much for asking all these questions i've always enjoyed doing these lives and i still will be doing them in some capacity at some point at least for the team guys if not for um once a month for you guys on the free rugby muscle uh facebook page thumbs up comments below let me know anything you want any ways i can help out Look forward to seeing you guys in Team Rugby Muscle when we do launch it in the inside the Rugby Muscle Academy. It's going to be fucking awesome. Enjoy the Six Nations this weekend, guys, and I'll see you in the next one.